was a tram out to the end of the line at the foot of the Dublin mountains. A fresh pot of tea was waiting for me at the house of mandolin player Mike Mansfield. In Irish, Scottish and American bluegrass music, mandolin players have adopted the flatback mandolin. It looks quite different from its ancestor, the classical Italian mandolin, which I heard in Tuscany when I interviewed Mauro Redini for an earlier Stringdom episode. I asked Mike about why the classical mandolin wasn't suitable for traditional Irish music. A lot of the times uh, they were unportable for Irish traditional music sessions because uh, a lot of the times you're playing in pubs and all this kind of stuff and you want to <laughs> put it on the table. So the, you, that that was the uh, that was that the, was the one of the reasons for the flat uh, back. Would be a, there would be a, a, a <laughs> big reason because you're wobbling around. You got pints and you got liquids and people are doing this kind of stuff. And the, the people who started back in the day had all sorts of problems that we don't have. Now. Right. Yeah. And I guess that's that's part of some of the equipment for for a session is you've got your instrument, you've got your yeah. your pine. You sit around, to have a play, and yeah, have a uh, chat. I mean, a lot of people like people don't drink like they do back then, but mm-hmm. it's kind of the staple mm-hmm. and the way the way they'd have it. Mm. Uh, and so it, a couple of things strike me as different about the Italian style it's like the the actual shape is it's almost it's almost like a a, a circle isn't it like the the oh, it's a two the, yeah the, the, yeah the, the the face of it is quite yeah. quite a bit larger uh, well this is a kind of new kind of particular one this one mm. uh, a lot of the Irish ones you would find have round holes ah I see uh, mm-hmm. the the development of kind of uh, jazz and bluegrass in America has really started to come in over here and right. there's a lot of change, there's a lot of progression. And the F holes here is a lot more like a violin. And um, so maybe maybe we can chat about uh, some of the techniques, uh, because you were saying earlier oh, yeah. that um, it, you, there's a lot of relation between the mandolin and the fiddle, like fiddle music, mandolin music. You see, well, um, you're trying to... One of the things about the, 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 the mandolin is that you're, a lot of it in Irish music is trying to replicate. Mm. You're, you're trying to replicate what you can do on a fiddle. Right. And uh, which is not possible because one is a legato instrument and one is a staccato instrument. Yes, yeah, so you're playing with a pick you're here. Playing a pick. As opposed as to the. opposed to a pick. So you're trying to get it as fluid and as like. You'd have different ways of doing it. Like, um, you know, there's different types of tunes in Irish mm. music. So you have, um, you have jigs and reels and slides and polkas and like it. Um, to try and get like a, a polka, you would try and go as many downstrokes as possible. So you don't downstroke for nearly everything, and then. Could you give us an example of something like that? Uh... Uh... That's just the right. flick. There's a flick there on the on the air. Uh... Oh yeah, so it's just like a quick down up sort down of up. little. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like half triplets, not really like a. <laughs> right. But you have a lot of downs uh, for for them, whereas like a for a jig you might have down up down up down up down up down. Um... Um... Right, and I noticed you had a like a, that was a proper triplet in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's just a quick. You would call that a, a flick as well, like a, um, or no, you call it, mostly you call it a triplet. Just, just a triplet, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. lovely. And that is, is that emulating the the sort of because I know there's a bowing technique as well, of, yeah, a fiddle yeah. technique, yeah. You, you try to try to make as much as as possible. You're, you're kind of dictated by what you can do. Uh-huh. Um, another one would be nowadays the banjo. Ah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, and do you think that's that's been growing in uh, in traditional music? Yeah, banjo is probably more essential to traditional music than a mandolin would be. Right. At least in, in, in this kind of. And has that always been the way, or it's louder? Been... Yeah, right. Okay. It's louder. Uh, it it kind of it would drown over most kind of mandolins. So right. You uh-huh. would have uh, yeah at a traditional session where pretty much the tradition is based. Uh, the, the 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 mandolin would be behind a, a banjo, and you kind of. Uh, play up to mm. them to try. And... So why don't you describe? Like uh, maybe there'd be some people watching that aren't familiar with the sessions of uh, of uh, Ireland and uh, all all kind of I guess maybe you could say Celtic yeah, okay, music, okay. you know, Scottish, uh, Irish. Um, so why don't you walk us through how how it sort of works? What can you expect from, in a session? From a session, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, there's a lot of kind of I suppose session etiquette that, mm-hmm. that comes in where. Um, so it's essentially you're ma- mainly in a pub. 
Yeah, you, usually. Yeah. Mem- uh, the tradition begins kind of in a, in a pub, but it, uh, I suppose down in the country, uh-huh. not so much. Uh, it would be house parties, and you right. might have kind of wakes or kind of stuff where people meet up and uh, there's some sort of thing on, and people do that, and that's right. that's it. So bring your instrument, bring uh, your... call a tune, everyone joins in. Um... Yeah, um, and there's a, there's a different type of music that's played in a different place and you would be respectful of what they're playing because they might not have the same tunes as you and they might not have played them the same way as you do uh-huh. and there might be variations from this note to that note mm-hmm. which is kind of dying off right uh, so, so you think it, it, it is becoming a bit more standard yeah, yeah the, the internet and things like the session and stuff like that mm-hmm. and uh, people putting up formally written versions of tunes mm. which are all being collected nowadays and yes. that leads us to this point where we have uh designated versions mm. and people are slowly with they have maybe 10 designated versions but they've kind of whittled or, and are getting more and more, more and more yeah. homogenized interesting it sort of strikes me as it's almost like a conversation you know because if you're you know if you're joining a bunch of people uh in one setting or mm. you're in, in a pub and maybe you're traveling and you're, it's not your home turf yeah. like you're always going to be a bit more respectful and it, it it seems like there is a lot of uh, communal kind of sharing of music yeah. rather than we're, we're all going to play this one. Well, what, what tends to happen is you have like one place and it has host musicians. Right. And mm. people go in and there are maybe, maybe two or three of them and they're hosting this so that other people can come in. And maybe there's uh, younger players or newer players who come into this session and they meet mm-hmm. these people. And you, you make the most of them and you make much of them. And even if they're not very good, you do your best because yeah. <laughs> that's... That, if you don't, you're 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 harming the tradition. You're exactly, not, you're not yeah. helping. And you're probably going to have a horrible time as well if you're yeah. sitting there feeling horrible. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, it's it's not worth it. So you you try to to put in the the thing, and what happens is at sessions you meet other musicians and you get a gig here and you get a gig there. And people who let's say people get a session gig, so they they host this and then they say, okay, well, I will invite this person. And then this person maybe has a gig here, and then they invite you for that one, and then you end up with a very rapidly with a very big circle of musicians that you might play with, work with, and then I guess you kind of share the tunes Absolutely. as well that that people certain people like, and yeah, know, you get to... so you go to a different session and they have a whole different list of tunes that they mm. would consider as their standard. Yeah, interesting. There might be a variation of speed in a particular place. You might have some sessions that are known to be catering to younger or newer players, mm. and other sessions that would not be right. I'm I'm wondering maybe if we can chat a bit about um, you saying this kind of regional varieties, and we were chatting a, a bit about the difference between like Scottish and Irish music. Um, yeah. Do you, do you think you could demonstrate a bit of like some of the, those those key features? Maybe you could play what you were playing earlier. Oh yeah, yeah. The um, oh that was a that was a Scott Skinner tune. Right. Obviously, I'm trying to interpret this on a mandolin. Yes. And uh, what's the tune called? Uh, the Iron Man. <laughs> very Scottish. So, to your ear, it's amazingly Scottish. Oh, yeah. uh, But why don't you walk us through what what strikes you know? Because maybe s- someone who's unfamiliar with the tradition won't, won't um, actually well, know. It, it kind of reminds me a bit of like an Irish hornpipe, mm-hmm. but different because it's 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 more. It's how would I put it? It's very kind of thumpy. It's like, like a bit more rigid. Yeah, right. It's bagpipe music. It's uh, it's it's. Like uh, Scottish music is really heavily dictated by bagpipes, and they they have like crans and all this kind of stuff that mm. they, uh, where they the particular the particular ornaments, ornaments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And their their fiddle players have always tried to emulate that, uh, and that gives rise that to gives, that tradition. Gives rise to that kind of style. Oh, interesting. I asked Mike if he'd be kind enough to play us a set of traditional Irish tunes.
No. Thanks for watching. Click on the links for more interviews, follow us on Facebook or subscribe.